Hey everybody, it's Casey here at Sea Run Fly and Tackle. Today I'm going to show you a cool little pattern for the Capilano. Uh, something I like to use for coho fishing out there. The Cap Coho Jigabugger. Alright, so to tie the Capilano Jigabugger, I've taken an RX FW55 mini jig hook in a size 10. Uh, you can use a size 12 if you like as well too, if you want just a little bit smaller presentation. And from there, I've added a Wopsy 532nd slotted tungsten bead. Why I'm using tungsten in such a big bead is that because these pools that we tend to fish for these coho and the capilano uh, are quite deep. Uh, so we want our fly to get down as quick as possible, get that sucker right into the kill zone, to add a little bit more weight and to help fix that bead in place, I'm going to add about 10 or 12 uh, wraps of 0 0.015 lead wire. And we'll just wrap that around the shank of the hook. And then I push that, those lead wire wraps into the end of that slot on that bead and that helps keep it all in place. Take your tying thread, I'll be using UTC 70 denier ultra thread uh, in fluorescent chartreuse in this case. You can use whatever equivalent that you like. Um, for a small hook like this I prefer something a little finer like the 70 denier just so it doesn't build up too quick on me, make it a lumpy body. I throw my proportions all out of whack. We'll tie that in. Bunch of wraps just to secure that lead in place and to make that foundation that we're going to build our fly on. All right, so for a tail, Fluorescent chartreuse, Wopsy, Wooly Bugger, Marabou. And to use this, I like to pull the material off, or the feathers, off of the side of the stem. And make a little bunch there. And why I do that is I feel like I get a little bit more movement out of the material instead of just having the stacked up tips from the tip of the feather. And it looks all right, it'll work, it does the job just fine, but I think it looks a little bit more natural when it's slimmed down, having the uneven taper on the end. Like I said, I think I get a little bit more movement out of the material tying it in this way. tie that marabou in all the way up to the base of the lead and that way it'll give me a nice even underbody to wrap the next material over again without creating any big bumps in the fly or anything too crazy anyway. So for a little more flash we'll add a couple of strands of crystal flash and fluorescent chartreuse from Hairline. I've taken a single strand I'm going to double it over on itself, and I'm going to run two strands down one side of the tail, fold it over, two strands across the back, and we'll trim that flush with the marabou. My next step We'll be tying in a little bit of brassy sized gold UTC wire. Then I'm going to select 
the hairline half grizzly saddle, dyed chartreuse. guy in by the tip. By tying this in at the tip, um, you're going to get the natural taper of the feather working for you. So it's going to start off smaller at the butt of the fly and get a little bit bigger as we move forward. And for our body material, hairline micro UV polar chenille in UV chartreuse. going to wrap that forward, covering the hook shank as best as possible. We leave a little bit of a gap here and there. It's definitely not the end of the world. So we use matching fly tying thread. And then that hackle will cover a lot up too. Again, not that the fish is going to care. But I do. <laughs> Tie that off next to the bead. We're going to palmer our saddle hackle forward. Just a couple of wraps. You know, it doesn't need to be a super dense fly. I think with this fly, less is more. Uh, so we're going to go about three and a half, four wraps there. When I'm trimming off a material like this, I always try and hit the stem if possible. And that way it'll pull the excess material, these little tips here, out from under the thread and just creating a little less bulk. And that's where a good pair of scissors comes in. I kind of whiffed a little bit here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I might have just outed myself on that. but. That's okay. And then we'll counter rib with that gold wire. And what this does is just locks that hackle in place. I always kind of try and wiggle my way through the fibers. And that way, you know, if a tooth of a coho hits that stem on that feather and breaks it, it'll prevent the fly from unraveling on you. Helicopter that wire off. Throw in a couple of whip finishes. So what this guy's going to allow you to do, the way that this ties, this fly is tied, um, being on this little jig hook with such a heavy weight on the front, yes, it's going to sink down really, really quick, um, but it's going to act like a little mini twitching jig. Um, so basically, when you're fishing this bad boy, let me just get the vise out of the way here, you're going to be getting a lot of pitching motion in the water. Um, that is something that's super, super deadly for any coho. It doesn't have to be Capilano coho, or coho anywhere. Um, but this is a pattern that I specifically like for fishing in those deep water pools. We'll always pair that up with a really fast sinking fly line. Um, in this case, a Type 7. Um, what the Type 7 allows us to do is just get that fly down in that kill zone as fast as possible. Um, the quicker the fly gets down there, the faster you're fishing, the faster you're catching fish. Hopefully limiting it out and getting back to bed. <laughs> so yeah, hope you like the Capilano Coho Bugger.
give that one a try. Um, other colors that I like to make that guy in would be all, you know, an olive green. Um, blue can be an effective one as well, too. And uh, sometimes it doesn't hurt to throw something bright in there, like a pink or an orange, just to, you know, wake them up if they're sick of seeing the same thing all day. Yeah, hope this one works out well for you. Throw a couple in the box. I think you're going to like the results. Thank you very much.